first shipment of the vaccine. The pilot called it a moment of hope and change. That is the dock where the trucks are loaded with the precious cargoes. Here at the hospital, security is very, very tight. This is a day Americans have been waiting for for so long. What we saw happen, the first vaccinations in the United States go into the arms of frontline healthcare workers. It gives you chills. This is what we've been waiting for. A vaccine injection, but it was also an injection of hope for the entire country. It is truly incredible. It's unprecedented. It's historic. It's never happened this fast in this way before. This is the inside story of an incredible race around the clock to get this vaccine to the world. We're talking about an army of researchers, an army of scientists working for really just a year since the first reports about a strange pathogen were coming out of China. Chinese health authorities are still working to identify the virus behind a pneumonia outbreak in the central city of Wuhan. We heard through the scientific grapevine that uh, it could be a beta coronavirus around the 6th of January. And the CDC put out a health alert network note saying that there's this, this new virus in China that they were looking at. In January, the Chinese released the genetic fingerprint for SARS-CoV-2, and it was off to the races. From that first moment, I knew scientists across the globe were gonna get to work to figure out a path to a vaccine. What scientists were looking for when they saw that viral sequence, that jumble of letters, was a specific portion, a small bit of that library, in order to use that to make an effective vaccine. When the genome was published on January 10th, I was home and I got an alert on uh, my phone and um, my immediate reaction was go. In Dr. Anthony Fauci's lab at the NIH, there's a scientist, she's 34 years old, named Kizzy Corbett. And she started working on this almost immediately. As soon as the sequence was released, we could quickly maneuver towards the vaccine development. There are thousands of decisions to make, but also a, a lot of organization. We were ready uh, to advance this vaccine with our collaborator, Moderna. Moderna is a biotechnology company just outside of Boston, and they've been collaborating with the NIH even prior to this pandemic. When we got the sequence, I think I emailed my team every six hours. It was really exciting those first few days, first weekend in January, knowing that it, we were gonna be able to move quickly. One of the most remarkable things is that back in January, it wasn't just vaccine scientists who were focused on this problem. There was a company called Emergent Biosolutions that realized we might need to scale up vaccine to a level never before seen. I came across an article about the outbreak in Wuhan and it got me thinking about the potential impacts not only on the world, but specifically on Emergent. Based upon that paranoia, if you want to call it that, I walked down the hall to the head of global supply chain and asked him to take the steps with begin buying up as many necessary critical raw materials as possible. Also breaking tonight, the deadly virus from China arrives in the U.S. The CDC revealing the first case of the deadly coronavirus here at home. By January 21st, when there was the first case in the U.S., we had just aligned on what our vaccine would look like. So when that first case happened, we said we need to move much faster. Clearly this is coming to the states. It's coming to major cities and ports of entry. The next day, Donald Trump does an interview on CNBC. We have it totally under control. It's one person coming in from China and we have it under control, it's uh, gonna be just fine. But what we know is that, in fact, uh, he knew full well that this was something bigger. He had been briefed on it by, by the intelligence community. The research into developing vaccines in record time was not only something going on in the United States, for sure. You have this couple who are the heart of a German company called BioNTech, or Shaheen and Oslem Teresi, and they were racing to develop the drug. 
my first reaction was, we have to stop it. It felt like an obligation. This married couple had already built a successful company using genetic material to fight cancer. We know that we have the technology in place, and we already knew that our technology is able to prevent infectious diseases of other kind. When they realized this was going to be a problem, they pivoted to use that technology to create a vaccine. Where immune system whisperers, so to say, are needed in order to engineer the best possible vaccine. We weren't racing against each other, we were racing against time. In January, most of us were not paying attention to this. And at that time, a small group of scientists were working hard in their laboratories to identify a potential vaccine for something most of us didn't even know would become a problem. Tonight, the first human-to-human -human case of coronavirus here in the U.S., just as health officials now declare a global health emergency. I was in between trips where I was visiting a plant in Italy and I was going to visit a plant in Ireland. And this was way back in the very beginning uh, of the pandemic, before there were lockdowns, before uh, much was known about the virus. And I got a call from my boss, who runs the entire supply chain of Johnson & Johnson. And uh, she said, hey, we need to develop a vaccine. We need to supply a billion doses. Uh, I need you to get on that. And I'll never forget getting that call. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.